picked up another. Um, so yeah, I started in January, applied in April, um, knew really basic things like how to do loops and how to you know create a very small program that would manipulate data in the most basic way. Um, but I agree with, with what you just said, like people had been coding for maybe a year or two and some people had just done book, done book camp prep and by the end of the first half of the program we were all at the same level. Yeah, so I'm kind of a, a bad example with this because <laughs> I graduated from grad school with my master's in electrical and computer engineering in May. So I had experience from academic, from academy, like what's it called, Educate my education, like coding, but it's always like theory. It's not really like applicable to like actual projects or any like postdoc application. So I knew the theory well, but I didn't know how to like really build anything or even like, like the, I literally in the summer before coming here, I learned how to work the terminal. And like that's something very basic that everyone should know before you come here. And you'll learn, actually, you'll learn in the, what's it called, the prep. Uh, foundation. Foundations, yeah. yeah. I so, didn't know how to work the terminal before yeah. I came here. With that being said, so. like, once I came here, like I was on the same level as everyone else. Um, I think something that Fullstack advertises is like Code Wars, which is not affiliated with Fullstack, <laughs> but a great resource. So if you play around with Code Wars and can get to level, I want to say seven, is that the one? Maybe seven or six? Somewhere right there. Yeah, because it starts at eight, and then you you work your way up by solving small challenges in JavaScript or any language that you want. Um, so that's a great way to practice. Could you say that name again? Code Wars. Code Wars. So like Code, oh, code Wars. wars. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of them. I used also, uh, so I, I'm kind of like, I kind of like her, like Elizabeth, when I knew Java, but I didn't know JavaScript. Mm -hmm. So I just spent some time in the summer learning JavaScript, and the syntax is very similar. Um, so if you know one language, you can learn another one really quickly. And so I just use Coderbyte, which is another website that's really helpful and has like practice problems and everything to help you prepare for the actual admissions interview. Um, Rich, do you have any resources that you would recommend to folks that you use? Huh. Um, I read a lot of man pages and just like documentation which is always really useful, but uh, Code Wars, I'll throw a plus one to that uh, before and during my time here, that was a really great resource for uh, like just doing Reacto style problems, which is something that's offered later on in the senior phase, and just kind of keeping me sharp with different kinds of problems going forward that make show up in interviews. And a fair number of problems that I did on Code Wars and Reacto did end up on coding interviews. Awesome. If, you, if you want to really challenge yourself, go to Leak Code. But that's like what actual software engineers do to prepare for interviews. So it's yeah. like it's a higher level. What's it called? Leet Leet co code? Leet code? Like L E E T code. code. Um, but that's but it's, yeah. what I was practicing yeah. on when I finished a program and I was preparing for actual software engineering yeah. interviews. Um, it's so a little much higher level, but. Brain teasers, yeah. they're pretty fun. Yeah. And to speak to something that Aaron said, um, everyone comes to Full Stack with a different background. So um, some people have CS degrees, but it's not you know, the majority by any means. Um, someone mentioned that they have a humanities degree. So we see people from all walks of life. Um, it's just about how you prepare yourself um, sort of immediately beforehand, like getting up to that level. And then the foundations course that they mentioned is the first section of the program. So you do 13 weeks on campus, but beforehand you have four weeks on your own so you know we send you the work and it's being coordinated with us um, but you're sort of bringing yourself up to speed so when everyone arrives you'll all be on the same level sort of a level playing field cool to comment on that yeah. i studied philosophy in college and then worked in hr and recruiting for four years before doing this program so not everyone has any cs background yeah i couldn't write a line of code after my undergrad so don't worry yeah. We had dancers, I, we had musicians, yeah. we had all sorts of people. And in my cohort, there was only one guy who had any CS background, like a typical CS background. Uh, wow. So very, very diverse. Awesome. Questions from the peanut gallery? Yes. Um, what made you choose to come to full stack in particular versus other boot camps? So during the process of looking at different coding boot camps, uh, I looked at a plethora of reviews from a whole bunch of different sources. Uh, and spoke to some people that I knew that had gone through programs in the past. And the two biggest pieces of advice that I got were look at the reputable ones because there's a lot out there. And some of them are just like fly by night stuff where they'll just throw you in, here's the material, no matter how you did it at the end, congratulations, and they throw you out into the workforce. Um, 
The other one was looking at the technologies that were being used and the technologies that I wanted to use and finding a nice meeting of those two. And at the time it was uh, React and JavaScript and Node and Fullstack sort of met both of those requirements as the top rated one that I had found through multiple resources and teaching those technologies explicitly. Another thing that I think is really important that separates Fullstack with, well there's two things. Um, so Fullstack teaches you JavaScript, whereas like full JavaScript, full stack JavaScript. Some boot camps will teach you Ruby, the back end, and like uh, JavaScript and front end. But I think it's better to master one language in terms of being really good at one language and know that really well as opposed to like being somewhat good at two different languages. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing that really attracted me to full stack was the outcomes. Um, you can check up, I know they have like the CIR data, which just shows you the actual outcomes. And that's just pure data to see like how people actually do. Um, so if you do that and you compare it to all the other boot camps that actually provide the data, it's pretty clear that full stack has the best outcomes. And if you also wanted to, you can look on LinkedIn, see people who graduated full stack, and you'll see people at like Google, Facebook, Amazon, LinkedIn, or LinkedIn itself. So. <laughs> um, so I don't know if everyone knows, but CIRR that he mentioned is um, basically an organization that works to sort of like standardize reporting in the industry. Um, so you all probably know it's sort of been like the wild, wild west out here in boot camp land. Um, and there's not too much regulation. So um, because the boot camps who do um, give people an education want everyone to be able to choose based on real data and we want the industry to survive and progress and, and be an ethical space to be in. Um, Full Stack actually helped to co-found this regulatory body um, and so they um, they look at everyone's outcomes and, and they um, basically audit everything that we do. So it's not just us saying here's what we have. It's them saying give us your data and we're going to actually check that you're reporting accurately and that this you're not manipulating your numbers. Um, so again, like he said, that information is on our website and there's um, the SIR website, CIRR.org. You can look, you can compare across schools who are part of that regulatory agency. Um, something that's helpful, if a school you're looking at is not part of that regulatory agency, you should probably just ask them like, why did you decide not to be a part of that? Um, yeah. Other questions, yes. Yeah, uh, so after the program, do you keep working with the same language JavaScript or do you um, like have to switch to a different language because of the job requirements? So actually, uh, to tackle both of your questions at once, one of the reasons I picked full stack was because um, they change their curriculum almost every seven weeks to make sure, well, they don't change dramatically their curriculum, but they adjust small pieces, they tweak their curriculum constantly to make sure that what they teach us is the most relevant technologies that will make us the most ready for the job market. Um, and so that was one of the reasons I picked, and it's actually really great because the job I have now is exactly the same stack as full stack. Um, so I get to use all the technologies I learned and more, um, and I feel like that made me super ready to really hit the ground running here, or at work, yeah. We use a plethora of technologies. We use Node and JavaScript and the same stuff that we use here. We use Python in a lot of capacities and we're starting to dip into Go in a very big way. So I've been going down the Go path now for a while um, to answer that question. <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't started actually working yet. I started next week, but I will be using Python, which is very similar to JavaScript. But at the same point, um, you're never actually going to be at the point where you're only, only going to use one language throughout your career. You're always going to be learning new languages. So it's good to be open to learning new stuff, new languages. But JavaScript right now is definitely like the hottest language to learn because of React. So for what's worth. Yeah. Yes. So obviously the outcomes are pretty good, but uh, I'm curious how long you guys were on the job hunt um, after graduating. It took me two months, I think, afterwards to from leave, walking out the door to getting an offer, um, getting offers. So thereabouts, um, I had a work history beforehand, so that kind of helped out in that case, but a large number of my cohort found jobs pretty quickly, like around that time afterwards. It took me two weeks. <laughs> so I got lucky. Um, I spent exactly one week interviewing between my first like coding challenge to the offer. Um, 
But again, one of the great things about full stack that I, I don't know if other boot camps do that is that we have something called launch day here. And that's how I actually I met my now employer. Um, full stack brings 20 to 30 is that right? um, employers on campus at the end of every single cohort. And then students get to meet and network with all these companies. And yeah, it really helps. <laughs> it took me four months, but that was really because I was being slow and picky with the companies that I was interviewing at. So like a lot of the times like, and you'll all learn this, like coding interviews is based off how well you do is 100% based off your preparation. So I was preparing a lot for it. So I'm taking my time with it. And I think that's a good thing. And, and we at Full Stack, our goal and at Grace Hopper, our goal is not to get you a job and then great, you got a job and our outcomes look great. Um, we want everyone to get the job that's right for them. So a lot of the time students come to us or grads come to us with offers and our career success team sits down with them and says, well, do you actually want to work at this company? Are, you, are they paying you what you're worth? Um, is there an opportunity for growth here? So the career success team, they work with you uh, in your senior phase, um, so like the second half of your time with us. Um, but most of their work starts once you graduate and they're on the phone with you every week helping you prepare um, for interviews, um, looking over your cover letter, and walking through negotiations. You got an offer from this company. You actually want to work for this company. Can you now go to company B and say, hey, company A wants to pay me this much. What are you willing to do for me? Um, so taking your time and sort of being picky the way that Aaron was saying is like sort of the culture here. We want you to find the job that's right for you that you can be with and grow with for a long time, not just scramble to get a job and be like, oh, thank God, I have an offer. I'm done with this. Um, so that's how that works. To speak to that, too, that's a resource that I exploited to no end uh, <laughs> during my job hunt, and the career success team here uh, was phenomenal in terms yeah. of responsiveness and being able to answer questions and helping navigate those waters. I agree. I don't know if Rachel, no, Rachel's not here anymore, but <laughs> I used to annoy her, like, every week. I had Jaren on like speed dial. <laughs> <laughs> and they definitely don't see it as annoying. Like that's yeah, that's what they're here for. But every um, time I was like, I really hope I'm not bugging you. She's like, no, no worries. No. I would come in and sit down and it was great. They're really great. Yeah. And also like, I guess with the job search, you really get what you put in. So like if you're just sitting there applying to, applying to like yeah. one or two jobs a day, like you're not going to do much. So you have to be proactive in it. And like the more work you put in, the more like results you get. And the alumni community is so supportive. Oh, yeah. um, a ton of people, you know, get coffee chats with alumni, get referred at the companies that alumni are working at, and that's how they, they get jobs. Um, that's a really, really good resource because we have alumni everywhere. Um, small startups, big companies, everything in the middle, here in New York, elsewhere, abroad. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah, I actually didn't even, you know, like those blind applications you send online, like just type in your phone and send them. I didn't do a single one of those. All of mine were through networking, through people on LinkedIn, or through people alumni who were through Full Stack. Not to dissuade you from doing that though, because it's yeah. how I got my job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Again, it's what works for you. Yeah. So our team is going to work with you to figure out like what's your style. Are you applying to 100 jobs a day online? Are you choosing to apply only through connections that you might have? Other thoughts? Hmm? Yes. Hold on, we have a young lady here. Uh, yeah, so are there any things that you know now but you wish you knew before you started the program? Good how question. Yeah, how intensive it is of uh, being cognizant that it's going to take five and six if you wanted to days of your week, and that's it's a job in of itself to learn. But um, there's like really preparing for that beforehand would have been nice it was sort of an adjustment to be made during the first uh, couple of weeks of the program but uh yeah past me would have liked to have known that <laughs> the, the three months i spent here felt like a year um, in, a good way. Good way. in the best possible way i made so many friends i connected to with so many people across cohorts um but it, it like that chunk of time was just dragged on for the best possible, like, it was oh, great. I, I mean, that in the best way. Um, oh, and, and that the career success team is available from day one, and I would have used them even earlier <laughs> to sort of talk and figure things out if yeah. I had known that. 
You, sir? Do you get into um, development environments and containers and DevOps kinds of things, like getting your code deployed and in a way, we used Heroku for code deployment mostly when we were doing projects, but getting into the nitty gritty of that, we didn't really touch on that in the program. It's sort of out of scope yeah, for just learning the JavaScript. Like, yeah. If you want to get really crazy, you can learn all this. All, you can learn all, and you will probably eventually learn all sorts of like AWS stuff, but that's like its own beast. We did have an opportunity like to. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We did have an opportunity to work on a personal project at the time, and we were encouraged to go and check out those resources. Like I did a Lambda project for mine, working with like Alexa and stuff like that. So. Um, there's an opportunity to do it, and it's definitely encouraged and supported by the, the professors, teachers, I'm not sure exactly what you call instructors them. Here. Instructors here. Right, because the second half of the program is project-based, and so you have a hackathon, you can work on your own on whatever you want, and yeah. then you have a final like capstone project, and so again, that's a, group, that's a group of four, but as a group of four, you can decide to work on one of these new technologies, and by then you'll have all the tools you need to discover and learn and like apply the technology. Yes. Yeah, I actually did have a question about the cloud. That's just a very specific area that I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. Do you have to know how to code, program, develop to work in the cloud, be it AWS or? You don't, you don't need to know it. You can you learn don't. it here. You can learn it here if you want to learn it here. You can, no, you can learn code here. No, I realize yeah. that, but do you, to work in the cloud, in the area of the cloud, do you, is it usually require knowing coding? Is yeah. it? I guess it more uh, depends on like what layer yeah. of the cloud you're yeah, working yeah. in. Uh -huh. So you can get really deep into that and go under the hood, or you can do something like just click through GUIs and create yeah. stuff like that. But So it, it runs the gamut. The cloud is an incredibly broad topic. Yes. OK. Other questions? OK, I have a sneaky one of my own. Oh. Um, yeah, watch out. Um, so we've talked a lot about technologies um, and sort of the skills you need to have um, to get into full stack or what you're going to learn while you're here. Um, but actually something that is a big component is like the emotional part of full stack um, and of being at a boot camp you know, 10 hours a day for six days a week. Um, so could you all speak a little bit to the like emotional support, the support you get that's like non-technical here? Um, I became very close with the people who I was in my cohort with. So we spent lots of nights sitting around here. We kind of uh, shut the place down playing games of like Avalon and we would <laughs> just storm into offices and take them over and- uh, I found my own. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. But, yeah, we, we just, um, when the coding would stop at nine o'clock at night sometimes, we would just hang out a bit further. And the support was from each of my cohort mates to everyone else, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I would say my cohort was very awesome. It's just like everyone says that, so take it with a grain of salt. But like some of my best moments here were, well, partially one thing is like, Everyone likes to go to Clarny Rose afterwards, just like a bar right underneath, <laughs> which is fun, like on the on Friday. So like, if you go to Clarny Rose on Friday, it's like filled with full stack people, yeah. which is fun. And also like, just everyone is like, it's good to be in this environment where everyone is there to learn, and like you're all in the same boat, and you're all there supporting each other. So like, one of some of my best moments, my favorite moments was like, towards the end of my senior phase, we were just me and my my friends were playing cards, like. Like right before the day before our hiring day, we are just sitting there playing cards, relaxing because there's nothing more you could do at that point. So, yeah, that's good. Yeah, no, same here. Um, going to Kalani's on Fridays, uh, people would bring in their switches, and so we'd play the switch on the external screens. Um, some of my best friends today are people I went to full stack with. Yeah. Like spending all day every day for several months and stuck in the same room with these people, like really, really creates bonds. And that's the, one of the great things about full stack too is that the cultural fit is just as important as your technical abilities when you actually apply to come in. And so there's a no asshole policy. And so that means that everyone is just really nice and wants you to succeed as much as they want to succeed themselves. And so it's not like really a competitive or cutthroat or like they're just in there for their own sake. Like as a cohort, like there's a really a, a strong group mentality that forms. Like even if you don't want it to happen, it will happen. <laughs> <laughs> You will be friends with these people by the end. Very close. Um, and so that was really, really great. And I did burn out, like I worked too hard, I did not sleep enough, but these people were there for me 
um, when I needed them to be. And there's also, what are they called? Uh, like the student experience. Mel oh, and like Derek. Derek. Yeah. Exactly. Student experience um, staff that was so helpful to just make sure we were doing okay. Um, so, yes. So I will say the no asshole policy um, is up on our website. Um, we just had a giant sign of it made. It's currently <laughs> in our office. Um, and so it extends, it's not just for students. Like, again, we're vetting everyone, not just for your technical expertise, as they just spoke to, but also to make sure that you're not a jerk. Like, you're really coming here, like a rising tide lifts all boats. You want other people to be successful and, and, and you're willing to, to support others and, and be supported. Um, but it also extends to the staff. So the instructors give all of their time. They're always responsive on weekends. They're all over it. Um, the student experience staff, um, not every boot camp has this, um, but basically we have a team of people who just have office hours and say like, come, tell me how things are going. Where do you need help? What's going wrong? Where are you being super successful that we can celebrate that? Um, they plan events um, for the cohorts to, to share, to sort of work on that bond, especially early as you're getting into things and it's really nerve wracking. Um, and yeah, just the whole academics and admissions team, even to marketing. I have very little um, to do with our students, but I get to know them in the lunchroom and they know what I'm gonna have for lunch every day and like we chat. Um, so the whole environment is really here to be mm, qualitative. Like we're here, we're here as people, as humans, and it's like a holistic experience. It's not just about learning JavaScript and getting a job. And every cohort also had like social chairs and the, an official photographer that was just a student. And uh, so we used all our social budget, which was not a lot of money, but we spent all of it on just cakes and birthday parties and things like that. So that really brought all of us together. We didn't, we didn't know we had a social budget. And then like <laughs> the last day of junior phase, it's like, you have a social budget for, social budget for junior phase senior phase and we're like, yo, we have a social budget. The last day, it's like, okay, we're going to the bar. <laughs> so, it was nice. Yeah, nice. We used it, so. <laughs> yes? So yeah. to make sure you heard. I heard. Okay. So um, I personally went to Full Stack and not Grace Hopper. Um, there were three of us, females, um, <laughs> out of 32 students. Um, but all of us had such a great time. Um, because again, no hassle policy. Um, I picked Full Stack, uh, first of all, because it's actually cheaper than Grace Hopper. Grace Hopper, because you pay later, there's actual interests. So it's a little more expensive. And then coming from, so I used to work in HR and recruiting, which was an all female environment. So I was looking for a change um, in that sense. And then also looking at the tech industry, which is mostly male dominated, I also wanted to just you know, get a head start and be in an environment where it's gonna be closer to what my job is gonna look like eventually. Um, so those are all the things I kept in mind um, when applying and it was a great decision. I do not regret it at all. I know people are great. Um, so, you know, Grace Hopper is on this floor, Full Stack is on 11, so we would bump into each other at Killarney's, or, you know, we, had, we did have events together too. Um, so I know some of the Grace Hopper students, and they had a wonderful time as well. Um, and I know some of their decisions for picking that um, program was the different tuition if they wanted to pay later once they had a job. Um, that was a huge decision maker for them and also um, the all female environment, feeling safe that they could ask questions, it wouldn't be intimidated. For some people that really mattered to them. I personally felt like if I couldn't ask questions in front of guys, then I wouldn't be ready for my job. So I just was like ready. Um, and I felt great about my decision. I don't, that, does that answer your question or is there anything else you want me to elaborate on? And can we call you Ellie? I think yeah, I've been calling yeah, Ellie, Ellie this whole yeah. time. Okay, great. Um, so she was actually, um, she spoke with Course Report. I don't know if you all know who that is, but Course Report is a website that sort of like vets coding boot camps and has lots of reviews and, and things like that. But she uh, spoke to them on one of their podcasts about sort of that same thing, like why would you choose an all man or a co-ed um, boot camp over an all female boot camp? Um, and just sort of speaking to 
gender disparity in the tech industry overall. So she was awesome. Um, and I can definitely include that link um, in the follow-up email that you all get after this, if you're interested in, in hearing that. Um, and that podcast was actually with also a full stack instructor, Karen, who mostly teaches Grace Hopper. Um, so she has a different perspective because she also did full stack before Grace Hopper was created. Um, so that, I think from her perspective, not what I had to say, her perspective was really interesting on that podcast as well. Yeah. Yes? What was your day-to-day -day life once you graduated? Like, was it stressful or were you kind of taking, taking your time? Um, I think that's each to their own. Um, I kind of started to take my time that I had the opportunity to and just looked at companies that I really wanted to work for and kind of targeted applications and as time moved on I would loosen that up and apply to yet more places. Um, I wouldn't call it super stressful. Uh, there was definitely a lot of work involved in landing a job but um, I wasn't ripping my hair out. I was pretty stressed. <laughs> um, I was pretty stressed but because I'm made myself stressed like I don't know I think it really is a matter yeah. of like, how you want to approach it um, so day to day we actually I was so I stayed on to be a fellow a teaching fellow um, so that gave me an extra few months on campus. Can I interrupt to yes. explain what a teaching fellow sure. is? Yes. So um, once you have graduated either program um, Full Stack and Grace Hopper sort of look back at who went through the program and who would be a good mentor for the next round of students and who is interested in mentoring. Um, so some people just want to go ahead and get a job as a developer and that's awesome. Um, but if you're like, I really love the program and, and I want to help others make it through the way that I did, um, then there is a three month period where you can stay on after and help the next group of students through their, their program. Right, so working really closely with the instructors and um, leading learning learning teams and things like that. So I got to do that for an extra three months after graduating from the program, um, which is when I really practiced algorithms and did adult, all that preparation on my spare time. Um, and so then after graduating from the fellowship, I um, would meet every day with my students, the people who had just graduated and did not stay on as fellows, and we would meet at coffee shops or the AWS lounge or wherever around the city, or maybe even here, we'd come back on campus and apply for jobs, prepare for interviews, do coding challenges. Um, so I was lucky that I didn't have to hustle for too long, um, but I was definitely more stressed out. You know, scheduling coffee chats, finding alumni to reach out to, finding companies, finding jobs to apply to. Um, yeah, I just really wanted to get a job, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had, uh, my timing kind of worked out nice because my cohort ended in December, so. In December, a lot of people aren't hiring. A lot of people just shut down like their hiring processes and stuff because of the holidays. So I had like that month to just not care about applying and just study, which was nice. And then once January came around, that's when I started applying and reaching out to companies and reaching out to people. And it definitely was stressful at times, especially like you go into you go into an onsite. It's a stressful experience because when you gotta get out, you gotta get out of your system though. <laughs> My first ever onsite interview. Uh, it's a company called Oscar, great company, but they have a really high engineering bar. And they ask a question, I bombed that right away. But I actually did well in the other questions, so it was a good experience and I did well. I didn't get the offer, but it was a good experience. And you just gotta learn that it's a process, like the job search is a process. And it was a, it was a great experience. Like I got to go to California, because Amazon wanted to interview me, so I got flown up there, that was nice. But it, it's a process and it, as like I was saying, it really depends on what you get, what you put into it. So. It can be stressful because it's a stressful time, but it's worth it. So, what kind of questions are you asked in interviews? The standard ones or something? Okay, so <laughs> this is its own beast. <laughs> so, coding interviews are very different from day to day software engineering. Um, Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes they yeah, are. Yeah. With the big companies like Google, Facebook, Amazon, they ask these things called coding algorithm questions, and they are very different from what you do on the, the day to day. Um, so, those are some things you have to prepare, prepare for in its own, in, in like completely different from, and some, it relates, obviously, you're coding, it's still code, um, but there are different types of problems. They're really based on data structures and algorithms, which is stuff you learn in this program, um, but you really have to master it yourself to, to do well in that. Because um, if, you, if you just go through full stack, full stack prepares you great, but if you, you're not going to be ready to interview at those top companies unless you prepare yourself. 
to add to that, um, so what Full Stack does that other boot camps, I believe, don't do is called Reacto. Yeah. Um, every morning during the second half of the immersive program on campus, for an hour every day, you'll practice those algorithm questions. Um, and that is a really, really good start to practicing for those interview questions. Um, it, exposes, it exposed me to a ton of things I had never learned about, all sorts of techniques and tricks on how to approach algorithms. Um, and again, that, I think that's something that other boot camps don't necessarily teach you. Um, so in that way, we're a step ahead, I think, when we graduate. Yeah, you practice um, it every day in senior phase, so it's yeah. nice. Um, and it gives you a framework on how to approach it. Um, to go back to the interview questions, um, in my experience, I was asked like everything, like <laughs> JavaScript trivia yeah. that you learn during <laughs> foundations yeah. and never use ever again. <laughs> Algorithms that, again, you wouldn't really use in real life besides the interviews. Uh, I got asked a whiteboarding question for React, which is the front-end framework, um, which is also pretty specific. Um, I was asked like architecture question, like, oh, how would you recreate Pong? Like, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's really all over the place, and um, you just have to, one, practice a lot, uh, find a lot of resources, and Full Stack has a ton of resources, and the alumni community has a ton of resources. GitHub has a ton of resources to help you practice, and also get lucky. Um, it sounds terrible, but the interview process involves luck. Yeah, if you, this is, my cousin is a beast. He works for, he used to work for Microsoft. He used to work, now he works at Pinterest, and they, people say like, if you take those like Google engineers and Facebook engineers, like who have like the toughest interviews and you re-interview them, half them wouldn't pass. <laughs> because you just have to be lucky in a sense that every, everyone who passes, there's some question you get that you will bomb. Yeah. It's just the way it is. Um, so I'm not making this up. Like Amazon asked me this question, which is Mario is trying to save Peach from Bowser and Mario can jump from different levels um, to save, save Peach. And there's ladders that jump, that go, that also connects levels. And how would you design an algorithm to see if Mario can save Peach? So it's a very general question, but you have to understand and break it down that this is a graph question. You have to, you have to break down the connections and then you have to break down, oh, I need to use a breath for a search, death for a search, just stuff like that you learn in the program. Um, so if you really break it down step by step, you can figure it out. But it can be really intimidating at first. Right, and maybe you knew graph, and then I go, and I don't know graph, but yeah. I don't get asked a graph question. And so... Yeah, exactly. I, I got lucky because I never got a CSS question, because I don't, I like, I'm really bad at CSS. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my friends who interviewed at similar companies got asked CSS questions, so if I had interviewed there, I wouldn't have passed. I would have bombed CSS questions. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, uh, it's just stressful. It really depends on, like, what companies you're interested in. So, like Ellie was saying, like, if you're interested in some of the top tech companies, like, they ask algorithms, you have to just deal with it. Um, but if you're interested in like smaller, mid-sized startups, they'll ask more JavaScript specific questions or um, just some different type of questions that are not related to algorithms. Oh, they'll give you a project to do at home. Yeah, yeah exactly. Which is very different, because yeah. then it's not, it's maybe less stressful, you have more time, it's really to showcase your skills, it's more applicable. So I have a friend who's like specifically targeting companies that have that type of interview process, because it feels less arbitrary. And how would someone find out what the interview process for a specific company is? Get a coffee chat with someone who works there. Get a coffee chat with someone who works Glassdoor there. Glassdoor also. Glassdoor. Yeah. You could also ask them. Some of them are very happy to tell you what the process looks like from the get-go. Go on Glassdoor, you can see some people report what questions I got asked. And then I walked into, okay, so Oscar interview. First one, <laughs> first, first interview that I bought. Second one, it's going to the day. I got asked a really hard question. But I saw it before on Glassdoor and studied it, and I, I crushed it. So you have to get lucky. How much did you guys, uh, you guys had months in between finding your job. Did you guys do your own projects? Like, how did you stay motivated to, like, keep learning in between the end of full stack and then? Yeah, um, I had uh, a personal project that I worked on while I was here as the, like, one the day hackathon event that happens. So uh, I had played around with that and kept building it out a little more, a little more, and just kept the GitHub commits green, tried to learn different things about it, and used it as both something that I wanted to do and something that I knew was going to be beneficial when I went into the interviews to answer that question of like, what were you doing in the interim between the end of the program and now? And it's, well, I was working on this stuff, and let me tell you all about it. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? 
I was uh, studying algorithms all day. <laughs> <laughs> so it really depends. I wish I should have worked on a little project on the side, and I did to an extent, like continue work on working on the senior capstone. Like I worked on that a little bit afterwards, just to say something I was working on, like an actual project. But I put all my like coding algorithms on my GitHub, so my GitHub was still green, which is nice. And like they, they sometimes they will look at that, like. Companies would be like, oh, I looked on your GitHub, and then you're like, oh, God, I hope you look, looked at something <laughs> yeah. Yes, um, I, I assume you were on your first job since you graduated. Uh, so um, what are your titles? Because oh. it seems to vary so much when you look at job applications. It does. I promise it makes sense, but I'm the head of IT for a company right now, a place called Button. Head of IT, okay. I'm a full stack software engineer. I haven't started yet, but I started on Monday. I'm a data, data engineer. Assignment data. Data engineer. What's the data thing? engineer. Okay, yeah. So it's interesting. It'll be different titles, and they all went through the same program. Yeah, and it, that's going to depend somewhat on the kind of company that hires you. So your title at a startup is going to be very different from your title at yeah. Amazon. Mm -hmm. But you're also doing different things, I assume, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, question here in the final. Sure. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of curious what the transition into like the workforce looks like. Do you guys feel like you are on pretty good footing in terms of your colleagues at your new workplaces? Obviously, you're going to be new, but... <laughs> yeah, so it was interesting because the company I was hired at, um, it, it used to be three of them, just two engineers and the CTO, and they hired five of us out of uh, launch day. So I came in at the same time as like four people I was really close to already. Um, so it's really nice to be able to, first of all, be with all the full stack alumni and just get to learn with um, uh, other like entry level or new grads or new employees. Um, yeah, and I, I, I don't know how to describe it, but it was really seamless. The transition was really seamless. One day I was here working on one project for the engineering team at full stack as a fellow. The next day I was just working on the different code base, but similar technologies, just as the code was just as confusing. <laughs> um, but full stack taught me what questions to ask. And so going into the job, I knew what to ask and you know how to go and just console log the code, understand how it's working, like be able to read it on my own and understand a little bit enough to then you know ask questions to um, the CTO. So pretty seamless in my side. I haven't started yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, doing uh, part of my job is what I did previously, and then the other part is software. So, and my company has a really phenomenal onboarding process, so it was very smooth. Oh yeah, we didn't have an onboarding process. Um, <laughs> we came in on the first day. They're like, "Oh, here are all the repos. Um, here's an issue. Can you go fix it?" And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> so that was day one. It was pretty great. Pretty great. Yeah. Yes. Um. So. To what extent were you looking for positions that were explicitly like junior dev, or did you feel like you needed to like build yourself that way, or be upfront about it, or how upfront were you about the fact that you just came from a boot camp versus like kind of underplaying it and just talking about different apps that you created along the way? You never lie about it, right? You just say I'm like I'm a boot camp grad, and this is why I went to boot camp, and this is why this is so awesome, and check out this cool stuff I've done. Um, uh, applying to junior positions for developer is definitely advantageous because they're looking for that level of like I just got out of a boot camp if you had past experience you can add that on but a lot of jobs also overstate their uh, requirements to try and scare people from applying so if you see a job that you like don't be afraid to apply uh, there's a couple of different scenarios there you they say no they could say oh you're a better fit for this other position or they interview you for that position so um, don't lie at all because they'll catch that and that will immediately put you out of the process even if it's the perfect fit place um that's really the way to handle it i would say that we're junior in terms of how many months we've, or mm. years we've been working on it but we're not junior in terms of the technology we know so coming out of the boot camp we're just as qualified as like any cs degree that just got, got out of college in many ways we're more qualified because we actually know hands-on how to code um, so I wasn't targeting specifically like junior positions. I was definitely looking at what you said, like yeah. companies that say like, oh, we need like one to three years of experience because you're definitely qualified for that. Um, and then again, I was lucky because at launch day, they're specifically looking for bootcamp grads. Um, and they're, 
that's another hiring strategy, looking for companies that have hired out of boot camps. Not necessarily only full stack, but just the other ones too, because they know what, how we can contribute, they know that we can learn really fast, they know that we're go-getters, that we're dedicated, that we'll spend in, put in the time that is required to learn or fix the issues or whatever it is. Um, so I find that people were pretty open to it and we didn't have to advertise ourselves as only junior engineers. Yeah, so if you take a kid who just went through the CS program at his undergrad or undergrad university, and he didn't do any internships, um, and he works for, I say, a year, you'll probably know more than him after a year because you're not learning at such a fast pace on the job at, in, a, in a wide span, like in full stack, you want full stack development. So it's really nice in that sense. Also, everything is overinflated. So I interviewed at a place that had three plus years experience. So don't take it with a grain of salt when it says, obviously it says like 10 plus years, okay, don't apply. Like, <laughs> but it is overinflated. Also, something good to remember, which I think can be hard to keep in mind, is that boot camps aren't new anymore, really. Um, I mean, full stack has been around for five years, um, and there are others that have been around longer. And so while several years ago, companies might have been saying like, oh, we don't hire boot camps, or like, this is a scam, a lot of companies have at this point hired one boot camp grad, and that's really all it takes to be like, oh, this isn't a boogeyman, this isn't a joke, like, this person was qualified enough for this job for us to hire them, and now they've worked here and they rock. Um, so a lot of times companies that, for example, Full Stack reached out to to come to launch day earlier in our tenure, those companies are reaching back out to us at this point to say, hey, we've hired from boot camps before, we love working with students, you know, would you have us at your launch day? Um, so boot camps are at this point like, semi-established, I would say, and companies, a lot of companies, especially the bigger companies who hire a lot, have sort of gotten over the like temerity around hiring boot campers. So that's something good to know. Also, I would say like, once you get an interview at a company, like your experience helps a little bit, but most of it is how you perform in interviews. Like, that's why Google will reject someone with 15 years experience, whether high or CS kid, who performs well in the interview, no experience, because they really value how you perform in the interview. So once you get it, it's all about, it's on you. Yeah. Um, so the question, one thing I'm like, thing I'm curious about is during the interviews, do they usually bring up the fact that you guys finished the boot camp? Do they usually like ignore it or maybe ask you some specific questions? Um. Yeah, at the beginning of interviews, I was typically asked, like, well, I saw that you did full stack as your last thing. Why did you go to a coding boot camp? What are you looking for? Things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are questions that I probably ad answered ad nauseum while <laughs> we were here. Like, during a, there's a hot seat that they do here, and that's typically the first thing that's asked. So, a hot um, seat is where they just put you in a chair and they can ask you any questions yep. for several minutes. Kind of like now, but with your yeah, 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 it feels like it all over again. But um, but yeah, it, it typically came up. I was actually shocked during the very few interviews where it didn't come up. It usually comes up in behavioral interviews yeah. more than technical interviews. Yeah, it would come up for me, but it's because I had a CS like CS like background, so they was just they were just curious. But it wasn't like a negative thing. Like mm -hmm. and I would I would always tell them the same thing. Like I told you guys, I had all this academic knowledge in theory, but. I didn't have practical software engineering skills, so that's why I went to full stack. Um, Ellie, you just mentioned behavioral interviews versus mm -hmm. technical interviews. Can you give like a brief overview of the yeah. difference between the two? Um, so technical is going to be like coding challenges or wallet boarding or like something technical. Behavioral is going to be asking you about your background or your career transition or just really seeing how you interact and how you can articulate articulate. <laughs> um, your thoughts and who you are as a person and see if you are a cultural fit. Um, yeah, so you as a person versus you as a developer. You always, that makes get, sense. you always get the question, tell me about yourself. Yeah, so that's the behavioral. One thing Full Stack does is they help you prepare like your pitch that you should have like at least like a little three minute like spiel about yourself that is nice and structured and you can go from like I went from here and I got to here, which is like an interview. 
Yeah, it's, and behavioral is mostly for the people who are interviewing you, interviewing you to know if they would want to work with you. It's like, oh, is this someone I would be okay mm -hmm. sitting next to all day? Yeah. Also, the technical interviews are not strictly technical. Yep. They're part behavioral. So, like, if you're an asshole and you go rock this question, like, they don't care. Yeah. Like, they want to see, like, are you someone you can work, you can work with? Um, so, like, people would rather hire someone who did w okay, but really they got, they got along with really well, as opposed to someone who's an asshole and just did well. I thought I had seen another question in the back. Did you have another question? Oh, I skipped. Um, <laughs> probably the expert would be like the content industry. How do you decide what kind of company you want to work at? What kind of role you want to do? How did you decide what kind of company you want to work for? Hmm. Um, I've worked for uh, a Gambit company called Gambit Global. 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 Gambit do I feel like your startup's gonna be around in a year or two with what you're doing? Um, so I definitely focused on that. That's not to say that I didn't also try for medium and large companies here and there. Um, I think in every single industry, it more depends, like the company itself matters more than the work that they do or the size that they are. So I, it's very subjective, I guess. I targeted companies that I liked. And uh, Care Success will work with you on that yeah. during the second half of the program to help you target what type of company or to what type of role would be best fit for you based on your personal desires and experiences. Um, I knew I wanted to work, to work for a smaller company. I knew I wanted to do full stack engineering, not just back end or front end. Um, and so that really helped then you know, target the companies. But also I applied for everything, you know, like <laughs> yeah. bigger companies, like you know, whatever comes around. But then when it came to decision making, I was like, no, this role, this offer I got fits exactly all the criteria I had written for myself before starting the job search. So, it's also something that you can't really determine before you go in and meet the company because you could read everything about it and like, oh, this place seems amazing. And you go in for the interview and it's like, well, actually, maybe it's not. Or there's a company that you're like, I don't even know what they do. It's like whatever, and then you go walk in there and it's like, oh, this is actually awesome. And that's exactly what happened. I didn't know anything about the company that I'm working for now before I went in, and uh, it won me over uh, tenfold. And it was something that I would not have. You know, I was not excited about it when I walked the through same, the door the first the day. Same thing happened but to he me. probably seemed yeah. like he was excited. Well, you have to put on that, like, yeah, great, woo, I'm really happy to meet all of you. Um, but yeah. it, it definitely turned into a place that I was legitimately thrilled to like, it's talk very, about. very similar for me. Like, a, a very good team and manager was very important to me. And so when I went for this interview, I was like, oh, you know, whatever, it's just practice. And I met everyone, I was like, whoa, <laughs> this is exactly what I was looking for. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. So, Simon, my company was here at hiring day, and I didn't talk to them. So I didn't, at the time I was like, I I didn't get matched with them, and at the time I was like interested in like some of the other companies that were there, so I didn't talk to them. Then I guess a few like two months after I graduated, I hit up Jaron, who is in charge of uh, career services here, and I was like, could you pass my resume to Simon Data? And then she did, and then I started the process. And at the time, I always was like, I wanna work for a big company, I wanna work for a big company. But in reality, what I was looking for was like three criteria, it's like a place where I can grow and learn, a place that helps you develop, and just a good culture and good people. And they had, they had all that for me, so I was really happy about that. So I, I will get your question in one second. You just said, I didn't get matched with them at hiring day. Yeah. So I wanted to touch on, um, we bring in, like Ellie said, 20 to 30 companies. Um, but we don't have like 70 hours. So you, you say, I am interested in these companies and I'm not interested in talking to these companies. And then career success takes everyone's preferences and sets up interviews for you with a couple of the companies who are there. And then after that, there's an opportunity, there's like a mix and mingle. So if there's someone you didn't have an interview with, you can go and introduce yourself and be like, this is my resume and I really love your company and somehow I missed you and let's be friends. Um, so yes, you had a question. Can you talk about the quality of life um, during the program? Did you have time to um, exercise, spend time with your family, um, eat healthy? What's a uh, family? Get Come sleep. On. Um, you know, you're a full stack family. That's right. <laughs> you don't need a family. <laughs> kidding, okay. kidding. It was definitely really intensive. And one of the skills that uh, I definitely developed while I was here was time management. Just figuring, okay, I know that I'm going to be here at this time. 
we typically work till then, what can I do after this? And there was definitely time and we had a couple of folks in our cohort who had families and would leave a little early or they would like adjust their schedules accordingly, you know, like the, the class was flexible, not the family. Um, so it, it's a drain, it's a lot, but there are ways to balance it out. Yeah, I think you're, you're always, you're mandatory, you're mandated to be here from 10 to what, 6.30? I think six. it's 6 now. 6, oh yeah. nice, yeah. I was here until 6.30. Oh, it's so, 6.30. Yeah, yeah, but. New York State said no more, <laughs> <laughs> 6 p.m. But yeah, so I would stay here until from like, I would, this is my own personal like choice. I stayed here from like 9 to like 8. But you really, you have time if you go back home to like be with your family, but you probably have to do some work. And But you have time on the weekend, which is nice. Like the weekend has um, CS Saturdays, but those are like side things. It's not like, it doesn't go with the curriculum itself. Those are like side things you wanna learn. So you could go and learn that, but you can also spend time with your family or work on like work you have. So it's, it's flexible, but it's, it is a lot of work as well. I wanna jump in for one second. Um, CS Saturdays, um, so on Saturdays, um, like Aaron said, um, there is a CS curriculum that we do where it's sort of the opposite of getting a degree, which is that you're programming, like day-to-day -day programming and learning to do that all day, every day. And then on Saturdays, you get a break with the like more theoretical end, which is like all that you would be getting if you were getting a degree. So it's sort of swapped like that. I wanted to let you finish. And it's remote and optional. Yeah, on it's Saturdays. optional. It's optional. Um, I failed at having a life outside full time. <laughs> <laughs> so didn't really exercise, didn't sleep enough, tried to eat healthy, but I don't know. The financial district only has so many food <laughs> options. And so full stack is kind of guilty. And we look provide the cereal. Like, like cereal is a oh, pizza. And we, had, we had Captain Crunch in the morning. <laughs> so it was pretty good. Um, and I just loved coding too much to the extent that I would spend my weekends working on projects and just do that. So, but again, like I, would, I don't have a family or any like other um, things that took my attention away from full stack. Did not see my friends, made new friends. <laughs> friends. It's all back to normal now. All back to normal. Yeah. All back to normal. Um, but yeah, it was definitely you know kind of like a parallel timeline that just. Your life's off the grid, but in a good way. <laughs> also, something that we tell people is that it's a little bit like medical school. Obviously, you're not going to graduate and do heart surgery, but it is that idea that like oh my gosh, this is so intense, but you know that it's for this short period of time, and when you graduate, it's going to have been worth it, and then you'll go back to real life. I was a student over the summer, so we called it the summer camp, where you know you go away for the summer, and then you come back to your regular life, and you had a lot of fun, and met a lot of friends at summer camp. That's that sounds great. great. Yeah. That's great. All right, you have had a question, or did you? We answered it. You have a question. Yeah. Um, do you think that we miss everything? Like, I feel like it can in full stack program you are here all day, every day, but a part time program feels like you will need the experience about what it's about. Mm. Do you have, do you know someone who took a part time program? I know someone who started this week. But. <laughs> <laughs> so I might be able to speak to that a little more. Also, person in the back, raise your hand who just got into part time. Yes. So she just started part-time. Maybe the two of you should connect afterward. Um, we actually had uh, uh, an employee of Full Stack take the part-time program, um, and she loved it. It's a little bit of a, like you said, it's you're not there with them all day, every day, but you're there with them for a much longer time. Um, so while this is three months, basically, boom, 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 um, because the part-time program is part-time, it's a much longer stretch of time. So there's actually um, sort of like a different growth trajectory that you get to experience like it's, it's just a different experience right um so there are pros and cons to each but it's still a very tight-knit group i mean every day after work you're coming to full stack for three hours um so you still spend a lot of time with those people it's just over a longer period of time and um, the part-time program is interesting because it attracts a different kind of person right so these folks were able to say, I'm gonna put my life on pause and come to full stack for three months and then go back out into life. Um, whereas part-time folks still have a job all day long. They're still growing in their career. They probably have a family. Um, so it's just a different mix of people. Um, and 
that has its own sort of lovely things about it. Um, so I wouldn't worry about not forming that bond. Um, I actually think one of our part-time instructors is here. So maybe if he's still here afterward, I'll introduce you. Um, but it's it's also a really wonderful, lovely group program. Um, I love recruiting. Is like recruiting of the students like the same thing? Yes, anything that we provide in um, sort of the full stack 17 week immersive, the flex program, the part-time program, um, th that community also has access to. Um, so they join launch day, for example. Um, they work with our career success team. So all of the same resources, just a different um, structure to the program. Yeah. Other thoughts? Yes. This is also about the part-time, so I was curious about that program. I'm not sure if you can answer this, but. Um, I will try. Regarding the workload and handling that part-time, because it sounds like they were here the, the 10th and the 6th, but then later, yeah. and then managing the full-time job. While yes, so that is exactly why the part-time program takes so much longer. Um, it's just a much, the pace is incredibly fast when you're in the immersive, the 17-week program. Um, it just moves more slowly for the part-time because of all the reasons you've just discussed. Um, you have to have more time you have to devote more curriculum time to projects and things because you don't have time to stay after. This is your stay after. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a different beast, but it's absolutely manageable. And we've structured the program specifically so that people who do have a forty plus hour a week job can also do the program. Um, like these folks said, it's intense, um, but you know it's. X amount of months of your life, and then you will be a software developer, and you will have a new job, and you won't have to stay after that job to do the program anymore. So you have to sort of think of it as that, like, I know what I'm getting into. It ends here. I can handle it until then. Um, so the three of you should chat if you're interested. And again, if our uh, flex instructor is still here, I might steal him for a second and try to introduce other questions? Yes. Uh, first of my question, we have all the cohort, uh, 100% completed to, to get a job after finishing the program. So she's asking if everyone from your cohort has gotten a job. Do you all know that information? I can't speak to everybody in my cohort, <laughs> but the majority of the people that I know had found employment. And you graduated yeah. in July of last year? Yes. Right? Most people have jobs. I think there's maybe like one or two that still don't have. The two of you graduated in December? I, so recently. I graduated in October. Oh, right. And then stayed, and then stayed. on. Um, but then again, like like Aaron said, the holiday was kind of a strange period. So I know a lot of people looked immediately after graduating in October, November, and then kind of stopped for December, January. And then met a bunch of people in February who were just starting to look for jobs again because they had taken like time off for the holidays. Um, so I think there's a couple more that are still looking, but everyone who was actively looking got a job. Hmm. Yeah, so I graduated in December and had the holidays, so if you count that, starting in January, I've only been like, it's only been like, I guess, three and a half months since um, people could actually like start looking. It's not everyone has gotten it, but it really, like I was saying, it really depends on like, how much work do you put in? Like, the opportunities will be there. Like, it's a fact, like everyone gets opportunities. So. If someone just went through full stack and they, they just stopped studying and just started applying online, like it might take them longer. But if you put in the work and you're active searching um, and there is opportunities and you prepare for those opportunities, you'll be fine. And that's um, something I'd like to add about the Grace Hopper program. Um, so Grace Hopper not only offers deferred tuition, so you pay when you get a job. If you do not get a job within one year, you don't have to pay the money back. Um, so the idea is like they're very invested and while that's not the case at full stack is our same staff like working with you our staff is very invested in making sure you get a job um, the career team sits right behind me in the office and you should hear them talking about like I haven't seen so and so in their asana I'm gonna send them an email and make sure they haven't fallen off the grid I don't see that anyone has sent me an email in a week what are they doing let me check in on them so there are there are people behind the scenes who are watching and being like 
seems like you're struggling, what's going on? Um, so they, they will work with you to make sure that they're doing all they can to make sure you get a job. And those SIR reports we were talking about, CIRR.org, they show you exactly how many people out of our graduates have jobs. So I think um, the last one is for like the, the one on our website right now is for the last six months of 2017. So you can see what ratio of people who graduated within the last six months of 2017 have jobs. And that data also shows average salary. Yes. For the record, we'll stack it high. More questions? Are yeah. recruiters always a time? Like those recruiters? Like third party recruiters? Third party. Yeah. Depends. It very much depends. Sometimes okay. they put you in front of real winners, sometimes they don't. So the ones that will like spam you on LinkedIn most of the time are a waste of time, but there are some third party recruiters that are really good. Like I worked with one, she was awesome, and she got me an interview at Squarespace, which is like a great company. Um, so it really depends. Um, but at the same time, like you, the, the recruiters, let's say you're interested in Facebook, right? Recruiters at Facebook have LinkedIn's, right? So you can go reach out to them on LinkedIn. And recruiters like that because it shows that you're active and you're not just someone in the system. Um, one thing that can be a problem with the bigger companies is when you just randomly apply. Is like, how many people apply to Facebook a day? Like, are they gonna actually get a chance to look at you and screen you properly? So if you take the time to reach out to the recruiters directly or you reach out to engineers at Facebook who have an incentive to refer you, because if you get referred, if the person who refers you gets hired, person who refers you gets like a few grand so it's very easy it's not easy but it's very doable to get a referral to any company you want as long as you put in the work so I used to work as a recruiter so I have a, a different perspective um, third-party recruiters like what they got they said like it, it can be really good or it can be really annoying for everyone um, the way in is through the engineers because so when I used to be a technical recruiter hundreds of people would apply and I would work with the engineers to understand what they the engineers were looking for but there's only so much I knew about technology and so I could screen to some extent the resumes but looking back <laughs> I may have done a good job I may not have done a good job so the, the the best thing you could do is bypass HR find a way to bypass HR and the resume screen that they will do the best way in my experience is to do that through referrals. Because if an engineer refers someone for their team or a similar team, they know what they're talking about by referring this person more than I do by reading the resume. So if they think that this resume is worth being referred to for that role, I'll pass it along. Like, that person knows what they're talking about, I don't. Um, so that, by far, is the best way. Um, if I know there's a third-party recruiter that is good, I will also trust their submission into my like applicant tracking system. But that sometimes also get lost in the amount of resumes. Um, and I always made a point of going through every single resume that would come into the system. Other recruiters didn't. Um, and other recruiters did not always spend as much time with engineers as I did, which is how I ended up here, I guess, <laughs> being an engineer myself. So, um, yeah, sorry. So, no, go ahead. Because some companies that get so many resumes that they can't screen have programs that was yeah. determined if it's someone <laughs> who should they talk to. So one way to bypass that, like Ellie was saying, is through an engineer who refers you. Because if the nine times out of 10, um, if someone refers you, an engineer refers you to a recruiter, you'll get at least a phone screen or a phone interview. Or at least a hiring manager will look at your yes. resume and yeah, he exactly. would know what your resume is worth that the HR person might not. So, I also want to add in here, um, Jaren, whom some of these folks mentioned, um, who is the head of our career success team. Um, she recently did an interview also with Course Report, um, just talking about like ways that you can optimize your resume and your LinkedIn, since our students don't usually don't have experience in the programming world. Um, so even for folks who aren't at full stack, like some tips to optimize um, mm -hmm. those um, sort of like your brand so that, for example, your resume will pass through the screening software and like how to organize it so that you are listing um, the technologies that you're proficient in, but you're also listing the technologies you'd like to learn and those words are gonna pop up in their system and their screener is gonna say, yep, I see Ruby on here, next. So 
I can also send that link out in the um, email that I sent as a follow-up. Also, the big part of senior phase, aside from projects, is like career development and career prep. So you're gonna have a really good resume. You're gonna have a LinkedIn that has everything detailed with endorsements and have not just endorsements, you have like 30 endorsements on each of them. Like I have like maybe like 30, 40 endorsements on JavaScript just because everyone in my cohort, we endorse each other. So the recruiter just sees that, oh, I guess this guy's good at JavaScript, yeah. which is true. I know this guy's good at JavaScript. <laughs> yes. That's it. Yeah. Other questions? We have a few more minutes. Last thoughts? Someone? Yes. During the interview process, if you were switching, not even switching careers, but did employers uh, tend to have any, like, was there any interest in the past experiences you had that weren't coding, or was it mainly just? What you made you want to be, yeah, what made you want to become a developer? Why do you not want to do this anymore? Why are you doing this? Uh, so th there were definitely a lot of questions about the path of, you know, you know, you were doing dancing before, you were an IT <laughs> person before, you were doing this, why do you now want to become a developer? And that's part of the career development part is being able to, uh, you already know why yourself, but being able to eloquently answer that question is something that they prepare you for. Yeah, I feel they'll, they'll screen your passion for coding more so than yeah. whatever you did before. Like no one cared that I was a technical recruiter. Yeah. Like those skills are not really relevant. But my passion for coding, like my path, like you were saying, mm -hmm. is they're gonna ask you about that. Yeah, so I was an electrical engineer for two years. Um, so some people cared, some people didn't care. At all. Some people were like, okay, cool. Like they did not care at all. So it depends. But most of the time, the stuff that you do learn from the jobs previously, like you, there's so much stuff you learn on the job that is not related to what you actually do, just like how to work, how to be professional. So that does help if you have previous work experience. And they won't hold it against you that you haven't been developing for that long. Yeah. 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 They want to see what you can do, which is what the interview is about. Okay, I have two more questions of mine to get through. So any more questions out here? No. Okay, my turn. Um, so, in real life, uh, when you have a job, you are working with like QA, like you're working with people besides just other developers. So, when you were um, preparing for job interviews, did you like seek out those other people as well? Like, instead of just developers, did you find other people you would be working with on the job and sort of learn to work with them? Or no? Is that something you learned on the job? Yeah. Sort of a Odd question because I work with every team in my company, ah. so I did. Um, but also, as a matter of course, during the interview process. Got it. We don't really have other teams. Actually, oh. I'm leading the QA and documentation and DevOps processes for our team. Very cool. Um, so now I get to learn what that meant, that means. But I guess I worked as a technical recruiter. I worked with the QA teams and some of the other teams before, like infrastructure. So I had some sense of what they were, but I didn't really have time, or I didn't really think about reaching out to them um, because I was so focused on being a software engineer. Sure. Like yeah. I didn't, yeah, I didn't really know. But got it. I just reached out to the engineers. So. Yeah, but they're cool. You guys should definitely <laughs> check that out. <laughs> yeah. QAs tell you what's wrong with your code. That's broken. <laughs> yeah, they'll tell you your code is yeah. really bad, and then you'll go and fix it. Um, in a nice way. Yeah. In a nice a way. <laughs> a harsh but nice way. Yeah. They, they, mean, they mean well. All right. So my last question, which we sort of touched on earlier, but what I'd, I'd like to get a little more explicit with is, um, is there information that you would give or advice that you would give to someone who's going into a boot camp or just looking into a boot camp mm -hmm. and like thinking about it? I know you had said like, I, want, I should have known how intense it was. Mm -hmm. um, but are there other other things that you are like looking back I wish someone had told me X or this is the advice that I would give to someone that I learned the hard way I would say it's tough it can be very tough at times but it's very 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 rewarding and it's very like I when I was working as an electrical engineer I didn't really get a sense of pride from my work I didn't really enjoy it this stuff I enjoy I guess it's a pride and it's very very worth the effort to put in and not only from a career standpoint, but just from a personal standpoint, like your personal development, like working on, like who doesn't want to go to work and work on something that they enjoy? Like. I would say, picking, piggyback on that, um, make sure you actually enjoy coding. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> it sounds funny, but we did have one person who like stopped halfway through the curriculum because he realized this was not for him. And coding is not for everyone. So if you're gonna gonna be coding all day every day, like make sure that you actually really enjoy this and it's not just oh something on the side for fun that you'll do for like a half hour um, once in a while. So just make sure you have a real passion for this. This is like something you really want to learn that you actually enjoy doing and that you feel energized by doing for a while until, until you get tired and then that's fine. <laughs> um, second thing I would say is once you do enter hopefully full stack or Brace Helper or whatever program, ask questions. Um, I have a friend who was too shy to ask questions like, oh, everybody else seems to understand. Like I'll learn it on my own. You don't have time to learn it on your own. Um, if there's something right now you don't understand, like go to the instructor and ask those questions that you have um, because the curriculum goes so fast. And that's one of the things about Flex, like you guys would go a little slower, so I hear that people have more time to sleep on the material that you really don't have in the immersive program. Um, so if you feel too intimidated by the instructors to ask questions, like what is it going to be like once you have your boss at work and you're like, oh, you know, I don't want them to think they hired the wrong person. Like, no, you need to be able to ask questions right away to your peers or the instructors or your fellows um, because otherwise you just fall behind pretty quickly. And that question that you're afraid to ask, 10 other people in the room have that question and they're afraid to ask it. So be the person to actually ask it. Yeah, um, there's this thing, oh, sorry. No, I, I would say that uh, imposter syndrome is a real thing. I was just about to say and that. I think that <laughs> uh, every single person in my cohort and everyone who I've talked to at some point during the curriculum hit that point where they're like, I'm not a real developer, this isn't real, I'm not gonna be able to do this, how am I gonna be able to do this for a living? Um, that's not a bad thing to feel. If you look back at where you are at that point from where you were in foundations or beginning or the code you wrote a year beforehand, it's incredible the progress that's been made. You're just not aware of it. And yeah. things start to become easier and you're like, this feels, oh my God, I don't, this isn't right, oh. Or you get <laughs> stuck on like a really difficult problem and you're like, ah, I wanna throw in the towel. Um, Everyone around you feels the same way, or will, or has. Uh, talk to them. Um, if it gets tough, don't bottle it in, right? Uh, but understand that that's something that's probably going to happen, or it may happen, and that's not something to dissuade you. Um, because after that, you get awesome jobs as developers. <laughs> One thing I would say that's is okay. you should, and this is tough, it's in the moment, but you should embrace the struggle, because that is when you learn the best. When you, do, when you deal with this problem and it takes you half an hour to fix it, like you're not gonna forget what you did to fix it. Like you're gonna know. And you're gonna learn those debugging skills, these uh, problem solving skills that you learned in that pro like throughout that problem. So it can be a struggle, but if you embrace the struggle, you're gonna really benefit from it. Also, you're gonna feel damn good about yourself once you finally get through yes. it. <laughs> so everyone, has that, everyone has that, they say like these aha moments where like you, you like are so confused in something and then eventually you figure it out and it's one of the, like, the best feelings, because you're just like, oh, that was it, it's not that bad. One thing I will add, um, we were saying like no assholes is a big value here. Another value that we live by is that we want to make you happy, but we're here to make you better. Um, so the program will push you, um, and the program will say, no, I can't tell you the answer, keep trying, figure it out, you're gonna get it. And the team is there to support you while you're going through that. Like, we know it's hard. No, it's not a competition. No one's cutting you. It's not a judgment if you can't figure it out. That's part of the process and you have to trust the process and really um, know that you're gonna come out on the other side because everyone does. Um, so, so we're really here to support your struggle because the struggle is really important. Any last thoughts before we give a massive round of applause for these three people? Oh, yes, we have one. I was just curious, um, the thing that you're talking about that happens on Saturdays, because um, like, I have a, a job that I'm trying to get to work in my head, like how I could do my job. Yes. Um, what time is the thing on Saturday? That's a really good question. Do you, you all remember it's what it's like? It's like, yeah, sort of later in the day. 10 to 4, but it's like very optional. Yeah. Like, I didn't go to a single one. So. It's also like yeah. don't listen to him. Yeah. Yeah. Most people don't go. Cool. Don't listen, but yeah. I shouldn't say that. But <laughs> it's also like not a big attendance thing. Yeah. So because it's optional, you can go into it, check out the topic, see how they're teaching it. If you like it, you stick with it. If you don't, it's not, they're not going to be like, where were you on Saturday? It's no. just yeah. Most people do the first one and then. 
Yeah. But it's really cool. And it's really oh, yeah. cool. It, no, it's, it, I did all like, of them. It was one great. of them I, I should have gone to was like a machine learning one that, that would have been really great. Um, there's one in algorithms. There's one that one on is algorithm is really good. good. It's taught by a full stack alum who now works at Google, yeah. and he's really good. So that's the one you should really do if you're gonna do any. You should do all of them. Yeah, they're all great. <laughs> yes. I have a couple more questions. Um, the Grace Hopper thing versus um, Twitter. Uh, since they're more like invested in you and getting a job afterwards, are there more strenuous requirements? So it's the same admissions process for both programs. Um, you take the same assessment um, and you meet with the same admissions team. It's just up to you which program you prefer. So if you have the money to pay now and you as a woman are fine with being in a room, a majority room of men, because again, these are the ratios that women see in tech, um, it's going to be majority men. It's not gonna be like 50-50. As a dude, you don't have a choice. You can't go to Grace Hopper. <laughs> um, but as a woman, um, you know, those are that's your decision to make. It's not our decision to tell you. We've decided to let you in here, but not there. I also so. wouldn't say that the care success team is more invested in Grace Hopper yeah, rather than full stack. It's, it's, it's the same same, same curriculum, same right. everything throughout the entire process. Right. Except for paying. Yeah. So the the policy sort of puts our money where our mouth is and saying like we want to get women into tech so if you don't get a job within the first year we don't get paid um, so you can see that investment there but like I said it is the same team fighting for you if you are a grace hopper if you are here part-time if you're here every day all day at full stack um, so you're gonna get the same amount of support um, and as a woman if you get in you get into both programs right. like that by default they let you into both programs, and it's up to you to decide which one you want to go into. I think the interview process is the same also. Yeah, it's, like, it's, yeah. everything is the same. Yeah. Except for like your cohort when you do get on campus. Yep. That's it. That's it. Last call. All right, round of applause. <laughs>